purpose of this lab is to take magnesium metal and heat it in the presence of oxygen. By doing that, you create magnesium oxide. If you have and keep track of the mass throughout the experiment, you could then determine the percent composition of the magnesium oxide, the percent magnesium and the percent oxygen. So we are going to be taking the magnesium metal and placing it in a crucible. This is a crucible, it's made of porcelain. The lid is deliberately bigger than the bottom such so that you could have the lid cracked open and still on the, the bottom of the crucible. We will be placing it in a clay triangle and then on a ring, which is on a ring stand, and we could heat it from below. By using a clay triangle and porcelain, as well as metal, uh, we can heat this extremely hot. And so that's what we need to do for magnesium. So the first step is to get the magnesium into the crucible. To do this, I'm just going to coil this around a pen. I gotta be very careful when I'm doing this because the edges of the magnesium are sharp and I don't want to cut myself. So no need to be fancy. Just get it in a, a tight formation so that it's going to fit nicely into the crucible. Okay, so that will fit right inside the crucible. Next, I want to get the mass of my empty crucible. And so once I get the initial mass of this, I don't want to touch it again with my hands because the balance that we're using has a level of precision that can actually take the mass of the oil from my fingerprint and it would throw off the mass. So pretty much from this point forward, I want to be using crucible tongs combined with wire gauze to move around my crucible. To properly use crucible tongs, you want to pick up the crucible by having the crucible tongs hooked upward and then you could close the bottom on the crucible and lift and you could lift the crucible and that leaves space if the lid does fall like that which is very uncommon you'll still catch the lid and so you could set it down. The reason why the crucible tongs are hooked upward is if you flip them over you can grab the crucible without the lid just from the side wall of the crucible and it allows you to uh, manipulate the lid of the crucible. Okay. Because this is an analytical lab, we want to be very careful with the measurements and we don't want to be touching it. And on top of that, since we're going to be heating the crucible, we don't want to burn ourselves. So that's why crucible tongs are important. When carrying the crucible tongue, I mean when carrying the crucible, it's always a good idea to have the wire gauze underneath just in case you do drop it. Okay, so I'm going to first take the mass of the empty crucible with the lid. This is an analytical balance. Analytical balances measure to very high precision levels. And so this one measures to four places after the decimal point. And so any movements around the top of the balance can change the mass. And so that's why it has this cage around it that can open and close on the top or on the sides. And so my balance is zero balanced. And so now I wanna take the mass of my empty crucible and the lid. I'm not going to touch it with my hands because I don't want to add fingerprints to it. I'm going to very gently put this on the pan and wait for my mass to stop. And that's the mass I'm going to record for my empty crucible with the lid. I could then remove this from the balance. Now I can add my magnesium to my crucible. So I'm going to open up the crucible add my coiled magnesium in, replace the lid, and then again, take the mass. Very gently pick it up. And then we can record the mass. There's our final mass. Now that I've obtained the mass of my crucible and the magnesium, I could place the crucible with the magnesium on my clay triangle. And it 
looks like I'm going to do this in separate stages so I don't drop the lid. So place that on the clay triangle and I'm going to place the lid on top. And now what I want to do is I want to drive off any moisture that I have on my crucible. So any water vapor from the air. And so I'm going to light my burner. So I need my safety glasses on. Turn on my gas source, turn on the burner from below. And when I light the burner, I'm going to get an orange luminous flame. I do not want to heat my crucible with an orange luminous flame because when I have an orange luminous flame, I'm going to have combustion byproducts that I don't want to accumulate on the side of my crucible, like soot. And so what I need to do is I need to get a flame that is non-luminous in blue. So I'm going to add air, changing the mixing ratio, and I'm going to get a warm flame with no to just a slight inner blue cone. And now I can hold the burner by the base and I could paint the crucible. So I'm heating all portions of it. And so I don't want to heat it vigorously. I'm just trying to uh, make sure that I'm driving off any of the water. Now that I have painted my crucible with a medium flame for two to three minutes, I'm ready to heat this crucible as hot as I can get it. To do this, I'm going to adjust my burner so that I have a better mixing ratio. I'm going to get a nice inner blue cone. I'm going to increase the cone or increase the flame size so that the tip of the inner blue cone is just licking the bottom of the crucible. So I'm going to actually lower my ring a little bit. And that way I'm vigorously heating my crucible. I'm going to want to heat it for about three minutes. And then after three minutes, I'm going to crack the top of the crucible just slightly to let in a little bit more oxygen. Three minutes has elapsed. So if I look at the bottom of my crucible, it should be getting to the point where it's red hot. And now I want to crack the top of the crucible so that I'm going to let a little bit of oxygen in. And I'm going to close it back up. And I want to do that for every three minutes for the remaining time of the heating. We're just about at the six minute mark. We can see my crucible is still nice and hot. I'm going to crack the lid once more, allowing a little bit more oxygen in to react with the magnesium. Close it up and we'll wait some more. We're a little past the nine minute mark, so we'll crack this once more. Put in some more oxygen and we'll wait our remaining three minutes. We're right about at the 12 minute mark, so I'm going to crack the lid once more. The last time I'm going to crack it. And then onward to 15 minutes. We are finally at our 15 minute mark. So I'm going to turn off the gas. I'm going to remove my burner. And I'm going to open the crucible and set the lid on the wire gauze. And so you can see we have a lot of magnesium oxide in there. I want to remove the crucible also to the wire gauze and I'm going to let it cool for 10 minutes. By taking the magnesium and heating it in the presence of oxygen, we we're able to create magnesium oxide. But air is 20% oxygen and 78% nitrogen. So we also have this secondary reaction taking place. So we have magnesium reacting with nitrogen to create magnesium nitride. That's a byproduct that we don't want, so we need to get rid of it. So what we need to do is add some water to our sample, thus reacting the magnesium nitride to create magnesium hydroxide and ammonia gas. We could then take the magnesium hydroxide and heat it to create magnesium oxide. So we'll have magnesium oxide from this reaction as well as the original reaction, and we can analyze the content of the oxygen added to our oxide. Now that we've let the crucible 
and its contents cool for 10 minutes. We're ready to add that water to get rid of our magnesium nitride. So I'm gonna add 10 drops, trying to get it all over the sample. I'm gonna add it a few extra just to make sure I got the entire sample. And so what that's doing is it's reacting the magnesium nitride so that we're creating uh, magnesium hydroxide and ammonia gas. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to return this to the stand so that I could heat it again. And I wanna get rid of the extra water. And I also want to drive off any of the, actually I don't need a lid at this point. I wanna drive off the, the water and I want to convert the magnesium hydroxide to magnesium oxide. So I'm going to return the burner to the crucible. I'm going to turn on the gas and I'm going to light it. This time I don't need to heat it as vigorously from the onset because it is wet. I don't want to crack the crucible. So I can hear my water boiling off. Now that I've heated it softly, I can now turn up the heat. So I'm gonna make my flame a little bit bigger. And I'm going to let that magnesium hydroxide convert to magnesium oxide. So I'm going to do this for about another 10 minutes. I have been heating my sample for 10 minutes. So at this point, um, all of the magnesium hydroxide that was formed from adding the water should be reacted and made into magnesium oxide. So I'm going to remove my heat shutting off my gas, set my burner aside, and I'm going to remove my sample from the clay triangle and put it on the wire gauze down here and let it cool. So that my crucible doesn't get extra water from the air on it and thus affect my mass, I'm going to let it cool in a desiccator. And so what a desiccator is, is it's a chamber it has calcium chloride in the bottom that helps absorb any of the moisture in the air. So I could open up my desiccator by sliding the lid off. It's got vacuum seal on it, vacuum sealed grease. And I'm going to place my sample in the desiccator to continue cooling. And I can replace the lid and we'll check back later. I pulled my sample from the desiccator and we're ready to take the final mass, put it on the balance. We also want the lid because we had that at the beginning and wait for it to reach balance. There, oh, almost had it. There we go. There's our final mass. So the last thing I want to do is I want to see how I did with my reaction. I'm going to take my sample and I'm going to dump it on a watch glass. Actually, I need two hands to do this. All right, there we go. I've scraped my sample out of the crucible and I want to check and see if I have any unreacted portions. It looks like everything is very brittle. It's no longer malleable, so we have our compound. I don't see any other chunks of metal in here, so therefore we have a pretty good conversion rate, pretty good, pretty good reaction rate for our sample. If I did not have a good reaction, this could be a source of error for my percent composition calculation, but it looks like I did a pretty good job.